Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking a little bit more about how this October is going to go. We're going to be taking a little bit of a bigger look at the overall pattern, taking a look at how long it could be cold, and other things of that nature. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you hope that we stay in this same pattern we've been in? Do you hope that it gets colder or do you hope that it gets warmer? Let me know in the comments down below and give me a reason why, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Alright, now let's get into this video. And first things first, we're going to be taking a look at this European Weeklies model. And look, this one I've been using a little bit lately. I showed you guys this one a few videos back, and this is for the first week. So for the 24th, which is two days ago through the first, this model only comes out every uh, few days or so. So the last one was on the 24th. This gets us to October 1st, so that's a really good uh, date to start with. So before October, uh, we're going to be taking a look at a little bit cooler than normal conditions there for the Deep South, but really overall just a bit warmer than normal for most regions. It's as we take a look at that first through eighth time frame here uh, that we really begin to see the cold air come in. Uh, that's going to come from Canada as a borderline an Arctic blast, actually, but the air isn't going to really feel Arctic cold, obviously, yet. But it is going to bring well below average temperatures, to say the least, especially in those darker blues and greens. You're really going to feel the difference there, especially. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the very end of the month. We're going to take a look at what this model has to say for the 24th through the 31st. And then I'm going to talk about pretty much why that might be wrong. Uh, spoiler alert. And then we're going to take a look at some of the teleconnections and start taking it day by day, just breaking down exactly when this cooldown is going to start, how long it's going to last. All right, now that we're taking a look at the 24th through the 31st of October, so this takes us right through the end of the month, uh, I'm going to talk about why this type of pattern doesn't really happen. And I've taken a look at the entire northern hemisphere. I'm not going to take the time to really break down the entire thing, but this is a pattern that is an example of an ensemble model that is getting confused and it's mixing its opinions to the point that it really just shows a, a blob of nothingness. All right, now what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at an example of this model actually doing the same exact thing with a previous pattern that didn't really pan out. So let's take a look at an actual temperature anomaly here. This is for the seven-day period before the 25th of September of this year, so before yesterday, so basically the past week. And as you can see, we had well above normal temperatures out west and well below normal temperatures in the east. Let's take a look at what the European weekly model was saying on September 3rd about this past week we've had. And as you can see, for the 17th through the 24th, it doesn't look like how it panned out. It actually looks an awful lot like what the model is calling for right now for the middle portion of October. So all in all, the lesson you want to take away here is that this model is very good actually within the first 14 days of its model run. Those first two weeks, it's a very accurate model, probably the best. After that point, it really drops off in accuracy. It's the same story with the CFS weekly model, except that one's actually a little bit better in the extended range. It actually has an opinion. This one just really struggles to put out an actual opinion beyond that point. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at your teleconnections, your AO, which we learned about yesterday. You can check that video out. Our NAO and then our PNA as well. And I'm going to start taking it day by day, taking a look at the temperature anomalies uh, for each day coming up. All right, now we're taking a look at that AO first things first, and as you can see, we're actually in a positive AO, which isn't too surprising because we have some above normal temperatures in most areas in the United States for this last little portion of September. Uh, it's a nice warm up, so if you enjoy the warmer weather, I would say to get out and do some stuff because it's going to cool down again uh, for October. And then, you know, by the time you get to October 15th, your average temperature has dropped so much, it's going to be harder and harder for you to get warmer uh, weather, obviously, the closer and closer we get to the winter time. So enjoy it while it's here because by the time we're in, again, October 15th or so, uh, even if warmer than normal conditions return, your, te your normal temperature is going to be about 5 degrees or so below what they were now. So get out there, enjoy it. That Arctic Oscillation takes a negative turn just about when we transition from September to October there, as you can see. Uh, the dates are on the bottom, by the way. The graph it indicates a, an above or below normal uh, value there, that line indicating the very, very 
uh, zero line on that. So as you can see, we reached negative values, which means colder than normal conditions for the United States uh, by time of reaching October 1st. And that's going to stay that way for the most part all the way through the 11th of October. There is a bit of a lag, so you can expect that those colder than normal conditions won't really arrive until later on the 1st, maybe through the 2nd is when they're really going to arrive. Now, what we're going to do here is we're just going to move on and take a look at that NAO and the PNA in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look at the NAO. And in yesterday's video, I said this is one of the least important teleconnections for temperature patterns. Uh, and it's going to hold true with this pattern as well. We have a very neutral NAO, not really going too positive or too negative at all. Uh, but as you can see, we're near neutral and we're going to kind of do like a little roller coaster. Uh, movement there and just a waviness in the very beginning here just very gentle going just below and just above normal and then it's going to kind of hover just below normal from about the first through the 11th again kind of being i would say just pretty neutral not really going to be too much of a factor moving forward but our pna this is where we start to see a really important pattern switch this one's going to be one we're going to need to watch closely because we're in a little bit of a negative PNA, which means that we have some colder than normal conditions around for the Western United States. And that usually means warmer than normal conditions in the East. In our current pattern, that holds true. As we know, right now we have some warmer than normal conditions around for the Eastern United States and a little bit of cooler than normal conditions for the West, but really not, not really. Uh, what we're going to do though, is, is by the time we're at about the 27th, we're going to start really going in the positive direction. Uh, very far positive, actually. And what that means is we will have far above normal temperatures in the western United States, which in turn means colder than normal conditions are going to be more likely in the eastern United States. So from about the 28th, because again, there's going to be about a one-day lag, about the 28th, 29th time frame, we're going to see those very warm conditions move into the west. And that's the same time that AO goes negative. So we're going to really see those cold, the cold air get shoved into the eastern United States with this setup. And the PNA is going to stay very far positive until at least the fourth where it starts to head more towards neutral but again still a little bit above normal above neutral there uh, but it's not going to be as dominant so we're gonna have to watch that very closely because that could indicate a time frame when the cold air could return back further west and maybe see some warm air return for the east but at least that first week of october the first through the seventh we have a very far positive pna a very far negative ao uh, that's going to indicate a very cold pattern for the eastern United States and a very warm pattern for the western United States, again, at least through the 7th. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're actually going to move on and we're going to take a look at the European ensemble model and just take a look at each day and see what the temperature anomalies are going to look like. Now, some key notes to just remember about what we just learned about our teleconnections. The AO is going to go negative right around October 1st, and the PNA is going to go positive around the 28th of September in just a couple of days. So we'll want to pay attention to that as we're taking a look at the temperatures. Again, we have a little bit of a negative PNA. Take a look at the colder than normal conditions up for the Pacific Northwest. That's probably where that negative PNA is coming from. Negative temperatures in the West means negative PNA. Okay. So we have some warmer than normal conditions around for especially the Northeastern United States, but really the Eastern half is mostly warm, although there is some cold. Well, by the time we're at the 28th, that PNA goes positive. Look at the West Coast. Positive temperatures means positive PNA. And then we start to see the cold air move in further east, okay? So we see it more for the central United States. You can actually make out with your eye where that cold front is at. You can literally see it, the Texas coast through Louisiana, through Mississippi, through Tennessee, Kentucky, and up and in through Indiana. You can probably see that where the yellow is very close to the oranges, but we still see warmer than normal conditions on the East Coast for Monday. Well, let's take it to Thursday, October 1st. And again, this is also when the AO starts to go negative as well. And we see a very strong positive PNA as well. You can see out West, very positive. The AO has gone negative and we see very far below normal temperatures. I'm also happy to say that now that we're using Weatherbell, we have Fahrenheit instead of Celsius. A lot of people complained about that. So the greens are indicating 9 to 15 degrees below average Fahrenheit. Uh, which would be more applicable to you, most likely, since you live in the United States. You can probably make out how much colder that's going to be than your normal. So let's go ahead and move it to the second. And you can see the pattern totally takes hold by this point. Very far below normal temperatures throughout the eastern United States, especially a little bit further inland. And then we still see the very far positive PNA out there in the west. And then that really holds on till about the 6th 
you can see there's still some colder than normal conditions in the east, warmer than normal conditions in the west. The important thing to note is this is also an ensemble model, just like the European weekly model. So it starts to do that thing where it just really loses its um, potency. It, it really just, the models start to disagree with each other and it comes back way closer to normal. We're actually going to watch that happen as we move towards the 8th. You can see everything gets a little bit of a more pastel look to it. That's the model becoming less and less confident. We still see the warmer than normal conditions in the west and some colder than normal conditions in the southeast still by Thursday the 8th. And then by the 11th, it does the same thing the weekly model does and just has oranges everywhere really close to normal. Now, real quickly before I close out the video, I have something really cool to show you guys. I've always talked about how ensemble models lose their potency and become less accurate with time moving on. We're actually going to watch that happen. So this is the 500 millibar geopotential heights. You don't really need to pay attention to what this is or what this means. Just pay attention to how um, high definition it is and how specific it is. You see all those weird shapes. It's, it's very specific with its forecast here. And this is for today, right now. Well... Let's move it to towards the 3rd of October, and you see how it becomes a little bit less defined, and it becomes a little bit more uh, blobby and just circular. It's losing its confidence a little bit there, and it's mixing its opinions. Well, let's move it all the way to the end of the frame, and as you can see, it becomes basically just a circle. Uh, it looks like a fidget spinner, actually, to me. Uh, and what we see here is by the end of the run, this model has completely lost its confidence and it's pretty much just showing a very average look so this is a great example of a model just completely losing its confidence and its agreement later on in the run again with the european model we have 30 members this is 30 separate models and it's taking the average of each of those combined the mean average of all 30 of those and showing it to us so obviously once you get 10 days out plus uh, they start to really disagree all those slight differences in the model become very clear once you move way further on in the forecast. I hope this makes a lot of sense. I just wanted to show you guys that because I thought it was very cool, uh, a way of showing you guys exactly what I'm talking about with that. I obviously, as somebody who has to look at the models every single day, I see it every single day, but I think that was a great illustration showing you guys exactly what I mean. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, which month do you think will be the snowiest this winter? And Cassandra Strick said January snowiest and February coldest. And I love the boldness there uh, by Cassandra. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Diamond patrons, Alicia Davis, Mad Birds, Cindy Klein, Dan Hazard, and Mark J, alongside our Platinum patron, Donna Carnes. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.